Hi everyone, I'm Kristen and this is the Queen City Yarn Dying to Knit podcast. This is episode 25, I think, and I'm coming to you from just south of Charlotte. Um, This is an episode about knitting and yarn dyeing and sometimes crochet, Um, just my adventures in making things uh, with fiber. So anyway, thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, I was planning on recording last week, but I had sick kids and a sick husband. Thankfully, I didn't get sick, which is amazing because I'm the one taking care of all the sick ones. (laughs) Uh, I had like a headache for one day, but that meant that with kids home and everything, it meant I couldn't record a podcast. So today I'm drinking some a latte with three shots because that's how I roll (laughs) in this super cute Uh, Jenny the Potter mug. Look, there's a little crab in the spaceship. This is from uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool. I don't know what year, but yay. So I have my latte today, and I have some finished things to show you. I have some works in progress to show you. I have a new design that I want to show you that's going to be coming out pretty soon. I'm going to call for uh, testers soon, so... Um, look for that. New cast-ons, lots of fun things. So let's start with finished objects. So the first thing you may notice, I am wearing a new sweater. That's right, I finished my Sophia by Amy Miller. And this was knit in the Night Harrisville Designs Nightshades yarn. And this is the VCR colorway. You won't be able to see, but it's got like this beautiful green. I absolutely love it. The fit is great. It's got some positive ease, so it's really comfy. Uh, it's like perfect length, and I didn't modify the pattern at all. Um, I really love the V-neck, uh, the neckline. It's really nice, and I do. I just love a V-neck. I wear V-necks a lot in you know ready-to-wear clothes that I purchase, and the sleeves are really nice. I was concerned when I was making the sweater. Um, if you remember the last time I podcasted. I think all I had left to do was the sleeves and the neckline and I had a trouble picking up the stitches for the sleeves because it wasn't picked up at the rate that I usually pick up stitches for sleeves which is usually about two stitches for every three you know stitches available generally that's my pickup for sleeves um, but this was one out of every two stitches <laughs> to make the um, I had to pick up the number noted in the pattern because there were short rows. There's, it's a sudden sleeve with short rows worked down. So I was a little nervous that the sleeve wasn't going to fit and I'd have to modify it, but uh, it ends up, it fits great. So I really, really love it. And I'm super excited. Um, I actually was telling Janice the other day, I'm totally going to make another one of these in Queen City Yarn in our Biddleville DK. I just have to decide what color I'm going to make, but I really love the sweater, and I think it'd be a great uh, sample to have, too, so (laughs) also I want another one. (laughs) So anyway, that's my first finish, and I'm really excited. It was not the first thing I did finish, though. The first thing I did finish was my Love Note sweater. I cast this on like the day before I recorded the last podcast, and I wanted, and that was a I feel like that was a Monday or Tuesday, maybe Monday. I don't remember what day of the week it was, but I wanted to finish this sweater by Friday, by Valentine's Day, because I wanted to wear it on Valentine's Day, and I did, Um, and I wore it out to lunch with a couple of my girlfriends for like a Valentine's Day lunch, one of whom was my friend Lori, who's the whole reason I made both of these sweaters, actually, and she was wearing hers, and... um, Thanks to my hair dryer, <laughs> I was wearing mine too. I actually finished it that morning, finished the second sleeve that morning um, and soaked it like before I got in the shower. Uh, and then when I got out of the shower, obviously it was not dry. <laughs> so after I dried my hair, I took my hair dryer in and I dried my sweater. <laughs> I got one of my husband's um, hangers that uh, he hangs like a suit on. Uh, Luckily he had a free one in the closet and I put it on there so I could you know have like shoulders in it and literally just hung it up and dried it, blow dried it. (laughs) 
And you should have seen Lori's face when she walked in because she picked me up for our lunch. And uh, she was just like, what? And I was like, yeah, hair dried it. <laughs> but I, um, I really liked the way it turned out. I did end up making it cropped. Um, and I wore it over a linen dress that I have. Uh, but I really liked the way it turned out. I um, held our Berry Hill yarn uh, in the cardinal colorway with a lace weight silk cashmere that I had in stash from the Sanguine Griffin from years ago. And it, I don't know that it's showing up as true red as it is, but it is true red and it the silk gives it like a sheen, almost like it has highlights and yes. So I'm very, very excited about that finish, this finish. So two sweaters finished. I also have two pairs of socks finished. So I also really wanted to, last as of last podcast, really wanted to get these DK weight socks done. This is out of Regia. That's an Arne Carlos DK weight. It's a, the six ply DK weight um, sock yarn. So I knitted up on size threes. I didn't bring sock blockers. I should have because I have two pairs of finished socks, but planning, you know. <laughs> I did a tubular cast on, which is my favorite. Did one by one rib, the leg. I, I used the fish lips kiss heel for this, which is not my favorite, but it is, I think, the easiest and the quickest heel to do. And so that's what I did here. These are for me. And now I have two of them. And so I'm really excited to have these done and get to wear them as we're still having some colder days. The other pair of socks that I finished are, I finally finished my creme de menthe socks, the little shorty socks that I've been working on. Oh my gosh, when I put it in Ravelry, I want to say it was like summer <laughs> of last year, since the summer, June or July, I cast on these. So I finally finished them. Um, I didn't have that much more to go in the second sock after the last episode. So I just did, I think four, maybe four more stripes and then the toe. And those are done, and so now I can start wearing these too. I've really been wearing the shorty socks a lot with my sneakers lately. Um, like when I'm wearing sneakers and leggings or whatever. So, those are the socks I got done. Now, I will show you a hat I finished. So, this hat I finished not too long after I podcasted last. This is our Berry Hill yarn. Held... <laughs> <laughs> held together with um, uh, Lobby NMA Kumo, I think is the name of her base, and it's a it's an alpaca and silk. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. This hat is so warm and cozy, and I really hope that we have a couple of cold days so I get a chance to wear it. I thought I might palm it, because you know, I do love a pom-pom. I look like a cone head. Um, but I didn't have one that I thought really looked great with it. Usually I go gray, but I think this needs more of like a taupey kind of uh, tan color. And I don't actually have one of those in my pom-pom stash. But I really like it without a pom-pom too. I ended up doing just a four-point decrease on this um, every other row. And I really like the way it turned out. So it's really cozy and slouchy and finished. So yeah, that. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to show you that I finished, and I'm really proud of this. This is crochet. Um, if you have been watching the past couple of episodes, I've been talking about the Queen City Yarn Studio Series, which is a yarn club that we started this year. And I have been making something with each, each yarn. Like, I get it too. <laughs> it's not often that I dye something that I don't, try to get get a skein of for one thing or another it's hard to dye stuff and then like not make plans for it so um for the february yarn i'm oh i'm let me show this real quick i'm using uh tuft woolens because i dyed this morning my hands are really really dry from the citric acid um so this is this is totally my jam. We actually have some of this in the shop. We have our own scent, uh, the Queen City Yarn scent. It's called, um, <laughs> it's called Queen's Garden, <laughs> and it's like a honeysuckle and hydrangea scent. So it smells really good. Um, so anyway, I've been keeping a skein and making something. So part of the studio series is to 
part of what I do for the studio series is I go down the Ravelry rabbit hole and find patterns that uh, I would like to make with, with the skein of yarn. And generally, what they've been so far, I mean, it's only been two months, but what it's been so far is uh, like ex- small accessories because I want something, I've, I have wanted something quick that I can just like cast on right now. And so those are the kinds of things that I am recommending. We had two uh, recommendations this in February. One was the Storm Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And she actually uh, gave a coupon code uh, for a discount on the pattern. And then the other one was by D. Shockney. And it was the Aspen Chroma Cowl, which is a crochet pattern. And so I, okay. <laughs> so the colorway is called I Choose to be a Llama Corn. The reason it's called I Choose to be a Llama Corn is because my daughter, Caitlin, uh, drew me the inspiration picture for this. And then I also had a llama, and her inspiration picture at the top said, I Choose to be a Llama Corn. And then I have a llama that her and I picked out at the Carolina Fiber Fest in Raleigh a few years ago when we were out there visiting um, my friend Liz and her kids. And so this is the way it works up. I do not have a uh, wound up skein because they all sold. So, uh, except for this one, I kept it. And also I, I dyed one for Janice too. So this is a crochet cowl. This is the first time I have made anything crochet that is not like a granny square or a toy. I did crochet a couple of toys when my kids were little or when I was pregnant with them, but I haven't blocked it yet, but I really, really like it. And I made a crochet thing that is wearable. So I'm really excited about it. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's not gonna be for me. <clears throat> Caitlin um, asked me to make her something with the yarn, the skein that I kept. And so I've, this cowl will, will be for her. I still have to weave the ends in and uh, block it but she's really, really excited about it. And it turned out really, really pretty. So I'm excited too. It was really cool to, uh, this is my first time really following a, a crochet pattern other than, uh, well, not my first time, but I, have, I haven't been crocheting very long. Um, not competently crocheting very long anyway. But this one had different types of stitches. It has like post, front and back post stitches, which I had never done before. Um, it had a different way of going and picking up this row to do this row. It made this like pretty line of stitches. So anyway, I'm super, super excited about this and really impressed with myself that I was able to make it. So yay that I'm, I'm looking forward to getting this blocked and giving that to Caitlin. Okay. So what else? I have one more finished object. And I did this on February the 29th. This is how I spent my extra day. <laughs> a little Santa uh, cork gnome guy with a beard and a mustache. Now, you'll remember last time I showed, um, is he in here? Yes. Last time I showed this guy. He's on a, he is on a um, champagne cork, so he's a little more plump. And so then I made this guy. And I, I said I was gonna write a pattern for this, and I, this is the pattern that's gonna be. <laughs> I tried and tried, on this guy I crocheted his beard, and I really liked the way it turned out. But um, as I just said, I'm not super proficient in crochet, and I don't think that I, um, know what I'm doing enough to be able to write it down so that others can follow it and for it for it to make sense. So I made a little garter stitch beard on this guy and I really he has I has sideburns which I think is cute um, and I really like the way it turned out so I channeled my inner Shana and used garter stitch. <laughs> so this pattern for this little dude is coming soon. I wrote it down, I took notes while I was making him and um, I still need to write it down, but so I'll be calling for testers for this little dude and um, putting that pattern out. 
sometime later, but I really like it. The mustache, like, makes me happy. <laughs> okay, so those are all the finished things. And now let's talk about what is on my needles. Okie dokie. So I finished two sweaters. This one and my love note. And so I cast on a new sweater. <laughs> and the sweater that I cast on, uh, you've probably heard about it a ton. It's the Felix Pullover by Savory Knitting. I'm sorry, I do. the designer's name is not actually on here. This is the pattern, the Felix Pullover. And it's a beautiful raglan sweater. And in the raglan, there is um, there's some lace. Like, it's made with it, the additional stitches are lace. And the yarn that I am using for this is another yarn that I got as a Christmas gift. It's from Echo View Fiber Mill, uh, which is, this is the mill that we use to uh, have our Berry Hill yarn uh, spun for us. And this is the uh, Recycled Yarn Collective, RYC, two-ply chunky. And it is 90% merino wool, 10% recycled yarn and sweaters. And so this is the color that I'm using. And it's got all these little bits of silk and all kinds of stuff. I believe this one uh, is supposed to have pieces of tie in it. Yes, it's a the colorway I'm using is called Man Eater, and it's made with recycled neckties. So it is working up so pretty. I cast it on, and so far I'm really loving it. So it's on a kind of a small cord. Um, I'm not through the yoke yet, but I'm working on it. I finished the short rows. This is, let me see if I can open it up so you can kind of see that. This is the raglan. Um, this is one side of the raglan. So I think that's the front over here. Um, but anyway, so it's made with these little lace. And so it's got a little extra. And then the yarn has a little extra. And I'm really, really loving it. I'm really excited. I've seen a ton of people making this sweater. And I was super pumped to cast on as soon as I finished my Sophia sweater. So that is on the needles. Um, I haven't, I've, I cast it on right away and then I haven't really worked on it that much in the past week because of a design that I'm working on. But I'm almost finished with the knitting of it and then I just have to do the writing of it and then I can be back to my sweater. Um, let me show you the, uh, let me show you what you have seen before and then I'll get into, I'm pretty sure all these other things are new. Everything else is new. So let me show you this. This is the Sh Ashbrook shawl by Tammy Gore. I've been showing this shawl forever. Um, I am almost done with it. So the next time you see it, it will be finished. It's this beautiful shawl by Tammy Gore. It is three skeins of fingering weight yarn. I'm using Old Soul Fiber Co. yarn in the... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me see... London Fog, Copper Penny, and Raspberry Truffle. So this is the yarn company, Old Soul Fiber Co. And this is the Soul Twist base that I'm using. And I've gotten, I've gotten quite a bit of progress since I showed this the last time. Let's see, last time I showed it, I was all the way down here. So I have done a lot, but it's still not finished yet. So down where this stitch marker is hanging. And I have done all of this, which includes this beautiful lace, which I, I really enjoyed doing that. That's really, really pretty little design. Now there was, let's see here, this stripe here was supposed to have bobbles in it and I chose to not do the bobbles. And maybe this one was too, I'm not sure. But I chose not to, and I, maybe these were too. Um, I just chose not to do the bobbles. I just did straight stockinette stitch and that worked out just fine. So I'm making lots of progress. I'm just doing garter stitch and I think you work some of all the colors. I don't know. But um, so I'm almost done. I just need, you know, a couple evenings to work on it to get the garter stitch done. 
and then it will be done done so the next time you see it I won't show it again until it's blocked like done and blocked and all that stuff which will hopefully be very soon all right so that okay now all the new stuff I'll save my design for last um, so the next thing I will show you are a new pair of DK weight socks so I cast these on 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 Sunday this is online super sock six ply and the color is 1431 this is the yarn and I believe this is a skein of yarn that my friend Lori gave me when she was just cleaning out and this is how it's working up I cast this on on Sunday because Caitlin had lacrosse practice and I wanted something on a nine inch circular that I could just knit on and get done or, you know, just work on and, and still be able to watch her play. And so this is how much I've gotten done so far. I pretty much did all of this at lacrosse practice. DK weight yarn just knits up so fast. I have it on a little nine inch circular needle so I can throw it in my bag whenever I need to. And so that worked up really nice is working up really nice. And those are going to be a Christmas gift. And that Ashbrook shawl might also be a Christmas gift if I can convince myself to part with it. I'm really trying to get some gift knitting done early this year. Last year I started in June or July, June I think, and that was a good start, but I still felt like I had to constantly knit Christmas gifts for a while. And so I'm really trying to kind of spread it out even a little bit more this year. So anyway. The next uh, project I'm working on is also new. I'm working on the self-care cowl by Louise Tilbrook Designs. This was the um, one of the projects that I suggested with the January Studio Series yarn shipment. It was a dyed on a bulky weight yarn. I used our Plaza Midwood Bulky. And I knit the hat out of the Studio Series yarn, out of the colorway that I designed for January. I really wanted to knit the cowl. And so I grabbed a skein of Misty Mermaid on our bulky base, our Plaza Midwood Bulky, and I have started the cowl. So it's knit flat, and you do start with a, a crochet provisional cast on, which is like the easiest thing to do, but I just cannot remember how to do it ever. Every time a pattern calls for that cast on, I have to go and look at very pink knits on YouTube. Which, by the way, if there is a technique and a pattern that you do not understand, I highly recommend the Very Pink Knits tutorials. Her tutorials on YouTube are so, so good. She does a great job of explaining things and shows things very clearly, too. So anyway, I went and watched her video for the crochet cast on, uh, provisional cast on, and then I started this cowl. And this is so fast. It's knit on size... Uh, 10.75 needles, seven, seven millimeter needle, and it's going really fast and I'm really loving it. And it's got these like little cable-y things. Um, and yes, I'm enjoying this. So this is going to be actually a shop sample for Queen City. Um, and I'm just kind of working on that as I go. I've worked on that while waiting for the kids to or, no, they were outside playing the last time I worked on it. But it's going really fast. I feel like I'm going to be done like in five minutes. I mean, that's never really the case, but it feels like that when it goes really fast. Okay, so I have one more project on the needles to show you, and it is my design. And then I have something up and coming that I'm going to be casting on soon. And then the giveaway, the pins. So, okay, so this is my newest design. It is a cowl. Uh, I have, I think I have to finish this repeat that I'm working on and then I have uh, one more just to finish it off and the ribbing, but it is uh, in similar size to my Every Which Way cowl, which I really love the way it fits. And I've designed this pattern to be a little reminiscent of kind of dragon scales. I have not decided on a name yet for it, but it will be done soon and I'll be calling for testers soon. Uh, it's a really fun color work pattern. It's not quite as simple as the Every Which Way cowl, but it is, uh, it's very straightforward. And there's a small chart to follow. 
and I'm really loving it. The colors that I'm using for this are Irish Disappearing Trick, which is the green background yarn, and then the hand-painted speckly color that I've used for the color work is called Lucky Charms, and that's one of our new colorways um, that we have dyed up for like St. Patrick's Day. So anyway, I really, really like how it's coming out. I'm super excited about it. It took me a long time to get that chart just right. Um, and yeah, I'm loving it. I'm just working through it. I'm almost done. And as soon as I am, I'll be giving a call for testers. It's in our DK weight, our Biddleville DK, which I really love that weight for cowls and for color work. It's, it knits up fast, but it still looks really nice. So that's coming soon. And I'm still trying to think of a name. So if you have a great name, totally let me know. All right, so I have one more project to chat about. And this is not cast on yet, but in the mindset of getting Christmas things on the needles and done like early this year, this is a pattern that I will be casting on very soon. This is the Coincide Cowl. Uh, it was designed by my friend uh, Shana of Shana Line Designs. And it's a cowl that she, I printed it in black and white, but it's a cowl that she has knit, um, designed for her husband. And I have quite a few guys in my life with uh, my husband and my, all my, my brother and my brothers-in-law, my father-in-law. So I picked a skein of Malbrigo sock yarn out of stash. And this is the Al Cossio colorway. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> 805. And this is some leftovers that I had from a shawl at some point. I guess I had just used it as a coordinate contrast color or something. But it looks manly. I think this would look, I think my brother would really like this. Also my father-in-law would match the hat that I made him this past year. But this uh, cowl is really cool because not only is it a cowl that fits nicely, but it can also be doubled up and worn like around the ears, you know, as like an ear warmer headband thing. So I'm going to be casting that on very soon. So I put it in a Christmas bag because it's going to be a Christmas knit. So yeah, I think that's all the projects that I have to talk to you about. I did cast on, I'm not going to show it because I literally like only cast on the, uh, is it called magical thinking shawl cowl thing by Casapinka. I picked three skeins of lollipop that I had in my stash and cast that on um, as kind of a uh, knit along with a group of girlfriends, um, but I'm failing. <laughs> because I cast it on because I really just wanted to cast on because everybody else was casting on. And then I put it down because I felt like I needed to finish this other shawl before I really worked on it. And then I also felt like I needed to finish my cowl first. So hopefully I will get working on that and I'll have that to show next time with some progress more than just a cast on. So I think that's all the projects I have to talk to you about. I do have the giveaway for the pins from Channy P. These uh, yarn is my caffeine pins. Sorry, I didn't take it out of the stuff, but isn't it cute? So the last episode, I told you that Channy had sent me three pins to give away and that to enter, you needed to leave a comment either on YouTube or on Ravelry. I only had comments on YouTube and I had a few. And so I'm, I did the random number generator before I started the podcast and I will tell you who the winners are. So the first winner is Erica Saint. She said that she was excited to cast on the Althea by Jennifer Steinglass. That's a beautiful sweater, color work sweater, I think, if it's the one I'm thinking of anyway. Jennifer Steinglass. I pretty much love all of her sweaters too. So yay, Erica. The next winner was Nicole Acuna, and she is working on the Tiny Trees sweater. So I need to go on Ravelry and check that out and see what that's all about. And then Karen ba Balani said that this is the year of whips. Girl, I feel ya. <laughs> I have a cabinet under the TV downstairs. We have like built-ins down there and under the TV. And there are like, it's just full of project bags of abandoned whips. <laughs> Some of them have just the yarn in there and the pattern and the needles that never got cast on. But 
yes, I, I can totally understand the year of the whips. I hope that you get all the things done that you want to get done and you get to cast on all new stuff very soon. So thank you for everybody who entered. If I said your name, please send me an email at queencityyarn at gmail.com and I will, uh, you can send me your full name and mailing address and I will mail out these super awesome yarn is my caffeine pins to you so that you can enjoy them and adorn your bags for all of the awesome things that you're knitting. So let's see. I'm trying to think if there's Queen City news. Um, yesterday we sent out a, yesterday? I think so. Sent out a newsletter showing uh, one of our new colorways in the shop called Silent Disco. I'll put a picture of it up because I actually just dyed it today and so I don't have a dry skein to show you. But um, this was a colorway that we released at the Virginia Beach Yarn Getaway and we are now putting it in the shop so that everybody can get some and, and be able to knit with it as well. And so I'll put a skein of that somewhere for you to see that's new and in the shop and so one thing that we did this time that we haven't that we've done some of but not as much as we did this time is uh, actually made up like kit options for this colorway and so we paired it with some of our favorite colors because that's pretty much what we like to do we like to dye new colorways and then you know pair them up with other colorways that we have uh, already in our dye book or create new colorways just so that they match and coordinate and you can use multiple colors for your projects. And so on the website, when you search for Silent Disco, you'll also see some really cool kit options. There's fade kits, there are two color kits uh, that contrast enough to be able to do cowls and things like that, color work stuff. So look for that too. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the website. We released, um, we have released five new uh, Berry Hill colorways aside from the rose gold that we released uh, in January of this year. So six new colorways on Berry Hill yarn this year so far. And I will also put a picture in here of those so you can see them. Um, but there are some really beautiful spring colors and colors that will work really well for doing color work with existing colors that we've had. So look for that in the shop too. And you can find all the yarn and everything at queencityyarn.com. And yeah, that's about it. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope to be back in about two weeks. Hopefully everyone will stay well. And um, nobody will throw a wrench in my plans as far as that goes. But thanks so much for spending time with me. And until next time, happy knitting. <laughs>